one told me. No one told me. I'm staying here. Now, you want to arrest me like Charles Oldman? Yeah. Come on. Are you arrest me like you want to put your hands on my back like Oakley? <laughs> you gonna put your hands behind my back like Oakley? Oh, man. What up, my fellow Knicks fans? This is your guy, Marcellus Ease. And don't panic quite yet. Jesus Christ. Now, last night, the Knicks had defeated the Houston Rockets in a beautiful game. But unfortunately, behind the scenes, yet another Nick ambassador had an issue with security at Master Square Garden. And apparently, the call came from upstairs, which is going to reflect on James Dolan. Now, Spike Lee, utilizing the media, got on ESPN's first take and gave his side of the story. But after the episode had aired, the Knicks had actually gave out their side of the story and they actually gave out receipts going against what Spike Lee had initially said. And let's look at their statement here. The idea that Spike Lee is a victim because we have repeatedly asked him not to use our employee entrance and instead he used a dedicated VIP entrance which is used by every other celebrity who enters the garden is laughable. It's disappointing that Spike Lee would create this false controversy to perpetuate drama. He is welcome to the garden anytime via VIP general entrance, just not through our employee entrance, which is what he and Jim agreed to last night when they shook hands. Now, Spike Lee had got on first take, and like I said, he kind of gave his side of the story. He said he'd even speak to James Dolan. As you can also see, the Knicks provided receipts of the front entrance and of Spike Lee wearing the same outfit that he was wearing when he had the initial bump with security. You could see him in the same outfit shaking hands with James Dolan. And apparently that's the agreement that in the Twitter statement that the Knicks had issued out that they had about him using the correct entrance. Well, you guys check out this segment and every once in a while, I'll check in. Okay. Spike. And I'd like to say yeah. I was using profanity. I was cursing up the storm. Well, you can't hide that because it's caught on tape yeah. and video. I mean, let's just remind people in case anyone's just right. joining us what happened. Spike Lee here with us now. Yesterday he was attending the game using the same entrance, Nick's, employee Nick's, Nick's media entrance that he's used for the past 28 years. And apparently this time around the rules had changed. They no longer wanted you to use that entrance. And Nick's spokesman said that was untrue. It was simply an issue of Lee using the wrong entrance. We're getting all That's that the out. wrong oh, entrance oh, for 28 oh, years? Stay with me. The wrong entrance was Wednesday. Stay, 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 stay with me, Spike. Once again, you know, just when something's over something so small, there's a huge argument, there's a huge discrepancy. It's usually a communication issue, and you'll see it throughout this uh, segment. Because here's, here's what I want, here's what I want to ask. To a lot of folks out there, who don't know about... Because you ain't talking about the Knicks. You're talking about Dolan. You're talking right. about... Yeah, right. This is not... This, so the, 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 even the thing you put up... That's is, right. It was not... It's not against the Knicks. All right. I got nothing... I got nothing but love for the players. Okay, here's the deal. One would ask, you've been a season ticket holder for decades. It obviously... Well, my is, third decade. It, third decade. It's obviously I, can I just say this real quick? When we got Patrick Ewing, I was in line that night. I've had season tickets since we got Pac June and three years. 1985. I, three years, I moved down. Okay. I got my season tickets as soon as we got Dave the Busher and Hint pulled it out. That's right. I was online at the garden for my season tickets. But I you was were upping them in your film since like 84. Right. Yes. Okay, wait, wait. Stay with me because we got to get these questions out. For sure. Spike is definitely a Nick fan that deserves a lot of perks, man. Definitely in his films, he's definitely supported the franchise. And, you know, he's been a low-key ambassador for the franchise. One would ask, why in God's name would the owner of the Knicks, who obviously has presided over a franchise that's been allergic to prosperity for about 20 years, why would he have a problem, any kind of problem, with his number one supporter, meaning the Knicks' number one supporter? How can you make sense of, of that to people out there? Well, first of all, let me just, before he, Spike says something, let me just say this. Through our society, whether it's children, adults, teenagers, celebrities, politicians, there's definitely an entitlement issue going on right now in our country, and it's across all types of people, all different types of cultures. Even celebrity culture, there's a huge entitlement issue. And, you know, it seems like, and a communication issue also. People are not communicating.
properly. Now, when you see little, you know, little tits for tats like this, where you're kind of making a big deal out of something so small, it's usually a communication issue. But the Knicks right now, especially James Dolan, they have to tread very lightly because the Knicks are definitely going through a rebranding mode because of their image. You know, they have to change it going forward. And they have to tread very lightly. Spike Lee, like he said before, over 30 years of being an ambassador to the Knicks, having some sort of issue over something so small like an entrance, it's going to be a big deal. Watch it. I, I can't speak for the man. I like to say, though, also, even though you tried to get me, I, have, I ain't saying nothing about Dolan. You know... Yeah, I've asked you several questions in the past about Dolan. You know, and you, you've never said a negative word about him. Never it. negative. Is there anything that you could have said or done that you think might have triggered you got, Dolan? I, I can't speak for the man. You have to get, you gotta, you gotta call him. I what, can't speak what, for him. How much, what, I'm trying to think. They, they haven't obviously done anything since his daddy gave him the team, since he inherited the team. Now, you'll see Max Kellerman, you know, kind of put out some of his sentiments on his jealousy, the fact that James Dolan had a father actually passed down multiple businesses and wealth to him. You know, he consistently makes an issue about that. And he has a number of uh, beefs with James Dolan, particularly the fact that he tried to silence the local media within New York from talking about the Knicks, and particularly the Daily News. Now, this has had a trickle-down effect on the rest of the media throughout the country, as they, they kind of have a beef with James Dolan about that. And they all take it personally. So anything the Knicks kind of will go through... It's kind of in. It's kind of heightened, like ten times over, as if it's something completely negative. And as you can see from the initial reportings last night, after video surfaced of Spike Lee getting into an argument with security, you know, initially with no proof, or not even Spike Lee making a statement, you know, all the media outlets reported that Dolan kicked them out of the arena with no proof, with no evidence, no research, no nothing. So James Dolan has to be very careful because. He's created a lot of enemies in the media, and he has to tread very lightly in this, re in this rebranding phase of the Knicks. Team from his daddy. Um, how much money have you handed over to the Dolan family? Would you like? What do you pay for season tickets, Spike? Because I remember in the mid '80s, it was like between a thousand and fifteen hundred. Stop, pop. Stop. I'm interrupting because of Spike. Spike asked me to reach out to his guy to Al find Palagonia. out. To find out. He doesn't even know. Al Palagonia, right? Spike's rich. Spike doesn't know, right? <laughs> So I asked Al Palagonia what, uh, what the ticket was. He said $3,400 per ticket per game. And, that, and that's uh, 41 totaling, home to games to every year? That's it, totaling $299,000 for a pair for the year when you add preseason. That's according to your account. That shows you the growth of the NBA. And particularly the marketing, the marketing and business strategies of the Knicks have been very successful. That shows you that. And that preseason is thinking of the scam, too. So you're talking about 300 grand a year times almost 30 years when you adjust for inflation. Yeah. So you have given them about, what, the equivalent of $10 million I look stupid over now. the year. <laughs> And that, oh, no, I look like a. But not only that, but Spike. I look. Well, I'm gonna use my Morse code. Morse code, Stacy. I look like a Mama Luke. <laughs> Something like that. Something Spike, like that. Spike, you are you were the only celebrity face mostly associated with the Knicks. Like there was Woody Allen, then there was you, and then it was Jack Nicholson for the Lakers, and you for the Knicks. So you also kind of give them free publicity and branding for decades in addition to the 10 million when you adjust for inflation 10 million dollars over my wife's gonna kill me <laughs> yeah why would they, I, so so again uh, you gotta ask dolan you gotta ask mr but dolan clearly you they're not gonna ask dolan well you see the thing what the media does is that for example look at david fisdale as soon as he gets fired by the knicks they'll quickly hire him on espn to talk so they can get some insight into what's going on in Madison square garden now, as soon as Spike Lee had this incident, or oh, they're more than welcome to change their plans for the episode that they would air the next day to have Spike Lee come in and give them some insight into what's going on at Master Square Garden, and particularly to James Dolan. James Dolan doesn't answer to anyone in the media. That's why uh, Leon Rose got hired. And, you know, the media has an issue that, you know, he didn't speak to any of them. He just got hired, and the Knicks issue out a statement, and that's it. The media has been kind of shut out of it. They don't, they don't get to ask any questions create any uh, articles or content to monetize. James Dolan has a huge, huge issue with the media. 
feel, it seems to me, you correct me if I'm wrong. I'm being that harassed. The fact that they wanted to, Hold you it. to leave the garden. Hold it, Max. You just said you're being harassed? Yes. Are you going back to a Knicks game this year? Not this year. Are really? you cons are you concerned? No, no, I'm coming back next year, but I'm I'm done for the season. I'm done. See, this is this is why Dolan gets away Do with it. Do you think it. that was Dolan's like Dolan's goal? I know my, you my, said you can't. My dear. You, I know you Please said you See right there, Spike picked up on what she was trying to do. And, you know, you, you could tell from the initial reaction. He's like, why the fuck are you asking me that question? But, you know, Spike is well well media trained. But, they're, like I said, the, the media, they're trying their best to get people around Master Square Garden, particularly people who get fired or people who have a, you know, who have a falling out with MSG to kind of get some insight. They'll hire them as consultants just to get some insight into what's going on around James Dolan. I, can't I, anymore. I cannot speak for the man. I, I have but another it, question. I can't speak for him. I understand that. I think it's just that when we have certain things happening with the show, say it's whether they bring in Leon Rose, they bring in Steve Stout, and they talk about changing the brand. I was just asking your opinion. If this is the first time it ever happens to you, they bring folks on to change the brand. You're considered part of the brand, and now they're giving you a difficult time. If maybe you personally felt like they're trying to change the brand in addition to you. And, and something I, I forgot saying, mm -hmm. it started a month ago. Because of 28 years, I've been used employee entrance. And after every game, I take the ramp. It's a circular ramp outside, yes. inside the garden. It's a circle. It's a shape of the garden. You have to walk garden. by it before we go to the media, yes. Yes. For 20 years, my entrance has been the employee entrance. For 20 years, I go down the ramp. And a month ago, they stopped me from going down the ramp. Spike, I have a question. Yeah. And you don't know okay. why. No, I, I, okay. I, all of a sudden... See, right there, that's a communication issue. They should have communicated with him, especially a season ticket holder like Spike, an ambassador of the brand. They said we have a new policy. Out of nowhere. Here's the thing. If they have my phone number, text, email, let me know. It is not my fault that I went through it. There's a policy change, which must have changed since Wednesday because I use the em employee entrance Wednesday. What was yesterday? Tuesday? Yeah. When did, when did the thing change? Today's Monday. Tuesday. Today's <laughs> Tuesday. Yes, it was Monday. No, but the, it's been a long the, day. The kill, the kill, the kill of Mockenberg yes, was sir. Wednesday. Yes, last Wednesday. Yeah. When does policy change? Again, when they, if I, if I'm a, a day late with deposit, my phone is ringing yes. off the hook. I have a, I have a All right, that's the issue right there. The fact that you know, when they ask him for payments, like you said, if he's late, they have no problem calling him. That communication should have been the same when it came to which entrance he can come through, et cetera, et cetera. They should have notified him. But at the same time, the security. Now, when you see a guy like Spike Lee, you know, of course, he's a celebrity. He comes through certain entrances. There's a way to speak to him to let him know, hey, you know, this is no longer the way. But, you know, hey, Mr. Lee, I'll walk with you and I'll show you the new way. And then we can have a conversation in the, in the meantime. There's a way of communication that you can have with someone to more, you know, kind of make the transition more easier. Especially a guy like Spike Lee, who's, who's kind of used to the perks of the of Master Square Garden. But I'm pretty sure they just told him, hey, you can't go that way. You got to go back outside and go around. You know, especially the tone of your voice and just everything. You know, it seems like it's the security had an issue with the communication and it kind of started a whole, like, kind of, you know, it kind of started a whole fire that, that was unnecessary. I have a question, Spike. Let's demonstrate something. I'm, my contention is fans like you are the reason it's like this. Because you're going to support the team. Like, even you, I'll be back next year, no matter what. As opposed to mm -hmm. me, I, I'm not going to come back till Dolan's gone. You... See, I'm not going to come back till Dolan's gone. This guy, Max Kellerman, he's not the only one that feels this way. A lot of people in the upper management of the media that you don't see on, te on television, a lot of the, the directors, they feel the same exact way. We speak very bad about the Knicks. How dare the fan base still support them? And you see the same thing in our politics with certain politicians that they speak bad about, but they're still supported. The media is offended that the public does not take their word as if it's gold. Grew up in Brooklyn. Right. For years, the Knicks were the only option. Spike, a team grows in Brooklyn. Can There's do a it. team in Brooklyn. The There's a team in Brooklyn, but they got to get that New Jersey smell out of them because you can't come into Brooklyn and brand your team looking like the Boston Celtics, the way the Nets did. And, you know, to have Paul Pierce, Garnett, you know, Brooklyn 
and you know, New York has always been a rival to Boston. You can't have a brand new basketball team in Brooklyn and they look like the Celtics. It's just it's bad branding. The Nets is still are still trying to shake that off. And then plus, they're still the little brother. They've been in Jersey so long. Most of the residents in New York City still think about the Nets. They still think about New Jersey. Barkley says four blocks away from my office, 40 acres of mule. Can't do. I'm not gonna let this guy. My guys, my this, here's what you have to understand. I don't even like to use, I don't usually use, like to use the word owner anymore. Teams belong to the people. Spike is clearly frustrated. I mean, this incident right here, it's, it's one of many. You can tell. Something is going on. He doesn't like the way he's been treated, especially for the money that he spends. It's more than just the entrance. This is this is actually probably a boiling point after a few, you know, small incidents. Now, me personally, when I went to a Knicks game, I noticed that the Knicks had Spike Lee leave his courtside seat to go all the way up top and to promote the chase, the new chase, uh, I don't know what they call it, the chase seats that's above the arena that overlooks the whole arena. They would have him do that a couple of times. I know some of his tickets sometimes are free. But sometimes they kind of have him, you know, kind of work it off by making him promote certain, certain aspects of Madison Square Garden. Teams belong to the people. If you're a loyal fan, you live and die with your, hold on, let me, with your team. Right. I, my father took me to the garden. 67, 66, 67, before they moved to the new garden, before they renovated it. I grew up a Nick fan, Walt Frazier, all those guys, those are my guys, and I'm not changing. Let me ask you this question, because you are a die. Huh? Brooklyn Nets front office, take notes, because Spike Lee's not the only Nick fan that's like that throughout the city. Most of the city is like that. They are not changing for the Nets. A hard Knicks fan, you're a loyal Knicks fan. You sitting up here today doesn't make the Knicks look very good. Particularly with perspective. Put an Oakley in, hold put on, the hold Oakley on, hold on. handcuffs to them. Fine, that, fine. That's another thing that so, Kevin Durant, we talk about people that want to come to New York. Yeah, that's what he did not mention that. He did not mention Oak. He did not mention Oakley. That was more detrimental, detrimental to anything. But seeing the heart and soul mm-hmm. of the Knicks right. let out of the world's most famous arena that, in I got handcuffs. It. I got I it. it. So, yeah, and that's one thing Dolan will have to adjust. This is a new era where you know, a lot, you know, Oakley can go into multiple different media platforms and express his side of the story. James Dolan, you know, I'm not sure if he's caught up in that, but just having the Knicks media trying to, you know, PR department trying to create a spin is not really going to work. There's a lot of different outlets, you know, people can get to and give their side of the story. It's not like back in the day where, you know, you can actually shun somebody's version of the story out by suppressing it. Especially James Dolan, he used to own one of the uh, major cable lines. So he controlled what actually came through the media. And that's pretty much a lot of the beef the major media networks have with him, is that he still exudes that power. So now I'm getting to you, because you sitting up here today, what you're doing is you're reminding us of Oakley. You're talking about what happened to you, and you're a diehard Knicks fan. You're going back there next year. you sitting up here today. It doesn't make the Knicks look very good right now. Are you concerned, or do you think you should be concerned about the effect that this could have on a potential free agent's willingness to come to the New York Knicks in light of damn, what you're damn highlighting? Damn damage. No one's... You can't... He didn't really think of that, but he feels like he's been wronged, and he's really there to express that. He wasn't... He probably wasn't thinking it too deep like that, but or he probably didn't even care at this point because it seems like the entrance is a boiling point to a lot of small things that's been bothering Spike about, you know, him being at MSG. Look, the guys will see me when it comes in, like I'll see Spike when it comes to Garden, but I ain't playing for the Knicks. So Why But you know, I just like to say I- He just lets you know right there, he's just a fan. He's just coming in. Guys don't really come to the Knicks for him. He's just a fan. He just comes in and supports the team. I know that this whole thing, thank you for having me. And I was, I'm going to say again, I was not going to say anything. I went home from the garden, the Rolls Fan Arena, in the cab saying, I'm not saying nothing. And then when I read that lie, that spin that they put out, I called you. I'm at the game. 
Charles Oakley hit me up because on Twitter. Reggie Mill hit me up. I was trending on Twitter before the game was even over. Damn, Reggie Miller hit him up? God damn. <laughs> Yo, Spike Lee and Reggie Miller have a lot of great garden moments, man. I didn't even know about it, and then you called me. Yeah, thank you for having me. See, the reason why Stephen A didn't even know about it, because most of the media members, they're not even looking to report anything on the Knicks. As soon as they hear, like, some funny story that they can actually bash James Dolan, they're not necessarily bashing the Knicks. They're bashing James Dolan. They'll hop on that with the quickness. But there's a lot of, you know, funny franchises out here, like the Chicago Bulls, that had the same president for 20 years and they're always in a losing situation and their ownership sucks, sucks so much that most of their Chicago Bulls team from the 90s with Jordan, Pippen, and uh, Phil Jackson, they had issues with the Bulls front office. That's the reason why that team didn't come back in 99. And that's one of the worst ownerships in the NBA. Most of the fan base has an issue with the Chicago Bulls ownership. But you'll never hear about that because they don't have the same gripe that they do with, with James Dolan. And with the quickness, they'll quickly snap at James Dolan at any opportunity. Well, it's smart PR for the Knicks. By the way, they want a new, a new, hey, give the new regime a chance. They win a game at home, and the headline's going to be after Charles Oakley let off in handcuffs, they have beef with Spike Lee, on who's the day, over millions of the, dollars to the, watch this game over the year. On the day that Leon Rose is named the yeah. president Shrewd. of basketball operations. And he didn't Shrewd. even get a press conference. And he didn't even get a press conference. Shrewd. All right. Damn. Spike, let, I've never seen Spike on national TV express some of the sentiments about the Knicks front office. Like, this is the first time. So, like I said, this, you know, it's the front entrance is definitely a situation. It's like a boiling point. It's a lot of small instances that happen before that front entrance instance, incident. So, Spike, done with the Knicks for the remainder of the season. Spike Lee, appreciate I'm going you. to the draft, though, and let's not mess that up. The okay. Black Klansman was, was fresh. <laughs> True fan. You not mess that up, Spike, because right now the Knicks are at a fragile moment when it comes to their image and the way they're trying to rebrand themselves, and this is not helping at all. And in the segment, you said you did not want to talk to James Dolan, you know, but it's clearly obvious through the receipts that the Knicks PR department has sent out after this interview, you did speak to James Dolan and you guys did shake hands. So like I said, it could be a lot of small things that bothered Spike, at, you know, as far as his experience at Master Square Garden. And he should have communicated that to James Dolan or some other, you know, head of department of, you know, I guess celebrity experience or whatever it is, fan experience, and let them know, like, these things, I'm spending this amount of money in here. These things are bothering me. Let's fix this. I'm telling you, that entrance was a boiling point for Spike Lee. But it is what it is. This is not going to really help with the Knicks with their brand new, you know, image, you know, kind of rebranding themselves, especially today is pretty much, I mean, the day that this incident happened was pretty much day one of the Knicks getting a new basketball, president of basketball operations. But it is what it is. You guys let me know what you think, and you guys stay safe. Peace.